Hey, greetings citizens, my name is Starlight, and I'm here to show you how I make my YouTube videos. I'm filming this on my phone, which is why it may look a little, little wonky, and don't worry, there's gonna be like a no bullshit, just how I make my videos, because the top comment that I see all the time is mainly about my quality in content. Sorry, I don't really know where to look, I'm kind of just looking at myself on my screen. Um, and I want to show you guys how... I get the look that I do in my YouTube videos and how you guys can get the look that you want in your videos. Really, it's not overly complicated, but my main thing that I'm definitely going to hit on a lot during this video is organization. Staying organized is definitely important in this. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's get into it. All right, so first things first, this is my desk, down there is my computer. This is the entire setup as a whole, camera, ring light. Uh, these are the lights I use, they're hue lights. Basically they just light up my, uh, my background. Um, and yeah, this ring light I got on Amazon and it just lights up my face for you guys while I make these videos. This is my microphone. This is the Audio-Technica AT2020. I'm gonna leave links to all this in the description for you guys. It's connected via XLR. XLR. Uh, to this little guy right here. This is the focus, right? If you guys have seen my uh, my first setup video uh, Nothing much has really changed a few things definitely have like my organization for one uh, The camera has changed quite a bit This camera is the Sony a6300 Hopefully I'll be upgrading to an a7 IV when it comes out, but this lens is a definite upgrade This is the 16 to 35 G master uh, which we'll definitely talk about that in a bit. And on top is the microphone that I use to capture audio from a secondary source. So this is my main source. If this fails, I switch to the camera audio. It helps to have a good microphone on top of your camera because onboard camera audio kind of sucks. So it helps to have, you know, actual high quality audio coming from the camera in case I can't use the audio coming from the microphone. Very rarely do I have to do that, but it does happen when that thing fails or this thing fails and the audio is just totally jacked up, I can always rely on the backup, which is the camera. The mouse and keyboard that I use is the um, Logitech MX Keys, completely wireless, and the MX Master uh, M3, I believe this is. It's a great mouse for uh, editing, not so much for gameplay, but you know, my gameplay sucks either way, so it doesn't really matter what mouse I use. I just like that it's completely wireless and it just keeps wires off of my desk and, you know, I feel freer. This is the um, Stream Deck. We're going to talk a little bit about streaming, but not too much because I'm not professional at it. So uh, there are better tutorials out there for streaming. This is just YouTube video only. These are headphones that I use for jogging. Ignore those. These are the headphones that I use in uh, my gaming videos. These are the Sony MWH-1000 Mark IIs, I believe. It's a, it's a horrible name, but I'll leave a link to that in the description in case you guys are interested in those. Those are the best noise-canceling headphones I have ever played games with, edited with. They're amazing. Highly recommend them. These are Logitech speakers that I got from my aunt. I have no idea what model they are, so don't expect the link in the description for that. This is what I, this is probably one of the most important things I use to make my videos. This is a, um, a SD card reader. So whenever I'm done uploading a video, I just reach into the bottom of my camera, pop out the SD card, and then I just slot it right in there. And uh, yeah, my videos are ready to upload to my computer so I can start editing them right away. All right, so now that I've introduced you to, get to the gear, let's talk a little bit more in depth about the camera. Like I said, the camera that I use is the a6300. The lens on top of it is the Sony uh, G Master 16-35. It's a wide angle lens, basically meaning that I can have the camera this close and it's still gonna be able to capture everything that it needs to capture. So it's gonna be nice and close to my face. It's it's also an f uh, what f2.8 lens, so it's gonna make the background nice and blurry, which is that look that a lot of people like, that you know people say that it looks really high quality. That's because it blurs the background because an f2.8 lens. Okay, so most people when they buy a DSLR, also, 
If you're making these YouTube videos, it definitely helps to be filming them on a DSLR instead of a webcam because the DSLR is just higher quality. If you can't afford a DSLR, do not feel bad. Like, please don't watch this video and think that you need to spend like an egregious amount of money just to make them look better. Like, guys, shooting on a webcam is perfectly fine. My very first videos were shot on a webcam. It is not an issue. You do not need to go out and buy an expensive camera like this to make your videos better. I cannot stress that enough. Especially this lens. This lens is such overkill for gaming videos. It's not even funny. But, okay, so what was I saying? Most people when they buy a DSLR, they just keep their camera in auto. What auto basically controls is everything. Everything you see down here, these little numbers, the ISO, the f-stop, and the, uh, the shutter speed, everything is dictated by your camera. And I don't like that because if I ever have the bedroom too dark, uh, the ISO could go super high and make the, fo the footage super grainy. Or like right now, how it's in F4, I shoot my videos in F2.8. I like to, the background to be as blurry as possible. And that F-stop is what controls that. You know, it says FE 2.8. F4, it's not as blurry, honestly. Probably not even that noticeable. But again, I just prefer 2.8 because I like it to be as blurry as possible. That's why I bought this lens and I didn't buy the F4 version of this lens. I spent the extra money for that 2.8 uh, f-stop. Uh, see right here, it's shooting 1 over 60. The, it, so that's actually 1 over 30 frames per second. Let me, it's a little complicated, this stuff. So I'm going to get a piece of paper. Okay, so I hope I don't alienate some of you guys here, but I'm just going to explain this really quickly. So we're all gamers, and we all know that games should be at 60 frames per second. 60 frames is what we like our games to be at. Um, so with cameras, it's a little different. If you want your camera to shoot at 60 frames per second, this little number right here needs to be 1 over... 1 20th or 1 over 1 25th. This camera can't do over 1 20th. If I try to change that, hang on, let me go back to the setting I was in so I can change that. I need to film at 1 25th. See how it doesn't have 1 uh, 120? It has 100 to 125. You want that to be as close to 1 20th as possible. Why? Because cameras are different. If you want the camera to shoot at 60 frames, you have to double it. So 60 plus 60 is 120. Therefore, the camera needs to be shooting at 1 over 120 or 125. But yeah, those are my camera settings and how I control them like that. Because like I said, everybody likes to put their camera in auto when they first get it. I just put my camera in film mode. And then up here, this M, that stands for manual. Again, that's something that you'd have to adjust in your camera. Let's see if I can uh, adjust it here. I don't think I can because I, I'm pretty sure I turned that setting off because I'm never going to change it to anything else. So basically, when you adjust this, it'll ask you uh, if you want to put it in manual, audio, aperture priority, shutter speed priority, and that's what these other settings mean right here. So you have manual, shutter speed pr priority, aperture priority, um, and uh, portrait, I want to say. I forget, honestly. I, I've never used any, other, any of these settings except for manual, and I try to always keep manual. I taught myself manual for a reason. That way I can control every aspect of my camera, and I never want it to um, make decisions for me, basically. So it's just something that you have to learn. Another thing that you can do that I don't do, especially for gaming videos, is uh, have a picture profile. So use one of these, use a, um, a picture profile, and basically the colors will be all muted and gray, and I'm not gonna show you any examples of that because it's super complicated. It's all I have to do with like color grading. Usually if I'm gonna make like a serious video, I'll, uh, I'll do that, but for gaming videos, especially on this channel, never do I really feel the need like I have to put in that much effort um, to color grade, especially for gaming videos. Like it just seems super unnecessary. And uh, one more thing besides the camera settings that I'd like to talk about is uh, 
I love Sony cameras because of their ability to autofocus. Sometimes my footage will, you know, focus hunt. That's where like the camera goes blurry for a second as it's like on my face cam. And so I'll just flip this little switch right here and put it in manual and it won't do that. But again, it's not really something I worry about too much when I'm making gameplay footage. If you guys notice it, you notice it, but like I don't stress myself out about it if the camera loses focus on me uh, sometimes because I know it's not going to stay that way for uh, for too long. If it bothers you, let me know in the comments and I will just definitely hit that every single time I make a video and adjust my focus and just, you know, I, I, I don't have to worry about the camera losing focus on my face again. All right, now for the less technical stuff, let, now let's get into actually recording the gameplay footage by itself. So as you see, I have up here, I'm planning on doing Life is Strange Before the Storm, uh, the adventures of Captain Spirit and Life is Strange 2. These games have been on my computer for years and I just haven't gotten around to playing them yet. Uh, At Dead of Night, that's a video that you guys can look forward to as well. Uh, but let's open up Steam. So I have loaded up here Little Nightmares and I want to show you this very specific example, especially if you're uh, interested in playing horror games for YouTube or streaming. Uh, most horror games will open up with the option to change the brightness. And for me, I tend to, I think I like a lot of YouTubers and I feel like this is good advice, especially if you're playing horror games is that don't adjust the brightness to your eye adjust the eye adjust the brightness to what you assume the audience eye is so go just a little higher than what you like i recommend like two percent three percent higher than what you would normally play the game at just so it's not overly dark and people don't complain that they can't see anything that's just you know advice from me if you're gonna play horror games don't because nobody wants to look at a dark video. They want to be able to see everything. So yeah, that's just an example. So the program that I use to make my videos is OBS Studio. Uh, I just, I have different profiles right here. So I have one that's just my face cam. I usually use these when I'm streaming, but this one is just called game because all it does is record gameplay footage. I click here and I select whatever game I'm playing. This happens to be little nightmares I'll hit okay and then the game if I have it selected will pop up right there ready to record uh, literally anything I do will be recorded and yeah it's it's always good I turn off the microphone uh, when I'm recording so you can't hear the mic but you can hear whatever the desktop audio is because you know that another tip uh, mute Discord if you're going to be doing desktop audio because if you get a discord alert They'll hear that if you get any kind of other alert on your uh, computer. They'll hear that So just mute your notifications on your on your computer Before I been, begin recording. I like to open up everything else that I'm going to be recording with uh, So that's Adobe audition once Adobe audition is loaded up. I usually have the camera up here pointed at me also recording and I'll hit record on Adobe Audition uh, and the camera. And before I even begin recording in OBS, I'll come right here to settings. It'll pop up here. I'll go to output, recording. This is where the organization comes in. I'll go to browse. And I have different hard drives, which I'll go into in a minute. But then I'll select Little Nightmares 1, Episode 1. And then I'll hit select folder. And this recording is gonna go straight to that folder. And I do that for every single recording. I do not forget that because those because these files get mixed up in any way, it can cause a lot of headaches, and that's how you lose files, and it's just it's super annoying. So make sure you guys are staying organized with your recordings. It is super, super important to this, and it, I preach it. Like every single time you record, that recording, that video should have its own separate file. Every asset to that video should be in that file. And if you feel like you have to, you can separate the assets by audio, video, what camera you're using. Well, that's, that's a different story that I'm not gonna get into here. But just stay organized. It's super, super important. Like just go in, create the folder, 
and make sure you're exporting the videos to that folder. All right, so once the game is recording, I'm and the audio is recording, I'm gonna name this Little Nightmares or just Little Night One so I know which one it is. And I'm gonna hit record. I'm gonna turn on the microphone. And together, before I start doing anything in the game, I am going to go. Hang on, let's uh, let's click the game real quick. I'm going to go three, two, one. I'm going to clap my hands, and it makes that large spike in the audio, which I can then sync up in Premiere Pro later. I'll show you guys how to do that too. And then I'll go over to the game, and I'll go with my mouse left, right, left, right, up, down, up, down. And then I just go into Premiere and I sync all of that. I sync the video and I sync the audio. That way I know everything is cohesive and everything is good. I do this religiously before every single video because if you don't have it, it's a super pain in the ass to figure out uh, where you're react, what you're reacting to in the game when you see yourself on the camera. And like I said, I don't record the camera in computer. The camera records on itself, and I just bring the SD card into this when I'm done recording. And I just sync up everything later. Now I'm done with that, I can close the game. I can close this. No, I don't want to save. Okay, actually, let's, let's hit save on this real quick. Because Adobe Audition will also prompt me to which folder I want to save it to and what I want to name it. I'm gonna save it as an MP3 file, not a WAV file. I'm gonna to go to Browse, and I'm gonna locate that folder. So I have a folder called Edit, and it has all of my video projects in it. 2021, Little Nightmares 1, Episode 1. And it's gonna save in there. But I don't need to do that because I've already done that. So I'm just gonna close it out. Close OBS. So I finished recording a video. What do I do now? How do I go about editing it? I'm gonna open up Premiere Pro. Once Premiere Pro is open, it's gonna bring you to the, the main menu, I guess you can call it. I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna hit new project. I'm gonna title this project, uh, let's just like how to edit. Like, I'm gonna delete this, this file anyway. So I'm gonna hit enter and that's gonna be my edit. Like that, this is the new project. And then I'm gonna double click on this little box right here. Mind you, if you guys have Premiere Pro, your your layout may not be the set may not be the same as mine. I definitely prioritize having a long timeline that takes up my entire screen. Uh, I keep the effects over here and the effects controls over here, and this is the main video right here. So before I do anything, I'm going to hit Control N on my computer. And it's gonna pop up this little screen right here. This is basically like your sequence settings. I want this video to come out in 1080, 60 frames per second. This is a custom setting that I have saved on my computer, but literally all you have to do, it's so easy to set up. Literally all you have to do, sorry, I got the hiccups. To uh, make this sequence setting, you just go to, over here to AVC HD, go to 1080p, and select literally any of them. It, it helps to just have 1080, 60 frames, but then just go over here to settings and set all of your parameters. So this is gonna be at uh, 59.94 frames per second, which is 60 frames per second. The frame size is going to be 1920, horizontal 1080. The pixel size, uh, 1.0, you know, again, Display format, uh, 59.94. Uh, Again, Rec. 709 uh, for your color space. Your audio, just leave it at default, doesn't really matter. Make sure your width down here is uh, 1920 by 1080. Use maximum dip bit depth, it's gonna give you this, just hit okay. Maximum render quality, it's gonna give you that, just hit okay. And that's fine, then you hit save preset and then you name it whatever you want. I'm not gonna do that because again, I've already made one of these, so I'm gonna hit cancel. I'm gonna hit uh, control N again, and I'm just gonna select it because I've already had it saved. 
And that's going to be the sequence. Now you can see your timeline. And I'm going to double click right here. And I'm just going to like click on a random video, one that I know that works well. So I'm just going to do Life is Strange Episode 3. I'm going to select all these files right here. I'm going to open them in here. And then I'm going to drag the game down first. Game always goes in the middle. My camera goes here. And my audio from my microphone goes here. Now, when you guys watch this, it's not going to be in sync. Like, this is my camera audio, this one right here. And I'm going to turn that down a little bit so you guys can hear the microphone audio. And I'm going to turn the, uh, the microphone audio a little bit. So, listen. Start recording. Start recording. You guys can see that my mouth isn't matching. Start recording. All right, three, two, one. All right, so let's uh, let's mute the game audio for a second. So in order to fix that, all I gotta do is select the camera audio and the microphone audio together. I'm going to right click. I'm gonna go over here to synchronize, and I'm gonna get hit sync audio. And Adobe's like Premiere Pro is fantastic at doing this by itself. And it's super quick for me at least. And the camera and the audio from the microphone, they're just gonna sync up automatically by themselves. I don't really have to do much. And boom, now they're perfect. Now I can just drag my, um, my microphone audio on top of the uh, camera audio, which essentially just deletes it. I'm gonna shave off a little bit of this fluff. Adobe is also really helpful in that it magnetically does whatever you tell it to. So you see how if I bring my razor tool here, this little line pops up basically telling me that I'm in sync and no matter what I do, it's gonna cut right on that line. So if I go over here just a little bit, it's not gonna like mess up. It's gonna cut right there. So I just snip. Um, the razor tool is C and to go back to, you know, regular pointer, it's gonna be V. So that's what I do. And then I select both the camera audio and the microphone audio, and I just link the two. Hang on, I can't really do that one handed, so I'm gonna hit shift, I'm gonna select the camera audio, and then I hit, all right, I gotta hit unlink, cause there's probably still more camera audio. So I'm gonna hit unlink, I'm gonna hit shift again, and then I'm going to right click and hit link, and this basically makes sure that the camera uh, video and the microphone audio are in sync. So whatever changes I make to either one of them will happen. So if I cut it right here, it's going to cut both of them and so on and so forth and see how it doesn't affect the gameplay. This is the gameplay footage right underneath. If I hide the camera, uh, you can see gameplay. So if I cut the camera, it's not going to do anything to the gameplay footage and I, you know, I can do whatever I want. But yeah, that's basically in a nutshell how I get everything to work together. Uh, as far as putting myself in a little square in a box, uh, I just go over here to effects. I go over to crop. I drag the crop over and I just shrink my face cam. I put myself all the way in the corner. Let's see if I can just drag myself up there. Yes, I can just drag myself up there and boom, there's, there's my, my let's play. And I crop off a little bit of the bottom and a little bit of the right side. And literally, that's it. Sometimes I'll add a drop shadow in uh, my gameplay footage, but, you know, that's that's sometimes. But basically, that's how you make a Let's Play video and get Last the camera right, and the top right, hand right, camera yeah, yeah. no matter what you do. And again, like I said, with the left, right, left, rights... Uh, you guys can see the mouse right there. I just sync up those to the left rights whenever it gets going. So yeah, left, right, left, right, up, down, up, down. And boom, everything's sunk and I can start editing the entire video. So let's exit this now. Okay, uh, I had to backtrack a little bit, but I totally just glossed over like how I go about exporting videos. So this is the complete edited video of life is strange episode seven it wasn't a very long episode so like there's only very minimal uh edits to this video honestly i feel like if i go back i can find out more things to cut out 
but literally it's just these few cuts. Um, no visual effects, nothing like that. But if I just hit Control M on my keyboard, it's gonna pop up this little thing, which is how I export. So I export everything in a format of H.264. I have a saved preset of 1080 60 frames per second, which I made the same exact way I made the um, uh, the sequence setting. So I just go down here with 1920 by 1080, frame rate 60, field order progressive, aspect ratio square pixels 1.8, render at maximum bit depth, hardware encoding, which is gonna use my GPU, profile high, level 5.1, Skip all of this, skip all of this, uh, skip all of that. Bitrate encoding, this is important. VBR one pass, target bitrate 18, not maximum, because YouTube compression. Uh, none of that, and I'm gonna hit right here, check, use maximum render, set, render quality. And that's it, and I'm gonna hit Q. Instead of export, I'm going to hit Q. I'm going to let another app do that. That app is called Media Encoder. It works really well with literally everything Adobe. And it's going to bring it up over here. This way, if I have multiple videos that I need to be exported and edited and just blah, and so I can keep working in Premiere on the next project, I'm just going to let Encoder do it. So I'm going to hit this little play button and it's automatically going to render out that entire video for me and I can go back into Premiere while that's working off to the side and I can get to work on the next video. Let's talk thumbnails. Thumbnails are fun. So how I get my thumbnails, if I don't take a screenshot from the game, I'll just like go quickly Google like life is strange and I'll grab like any random screenshot that I feel like I, I can use. As long as it relates to the video, I'll use it. Uh, normally, I just screenshot whatever I get from my own video, but you know, this is a good option too. And as far as like getting the title of the game into there, so like Life is Strange PNG. And it's gonna give you just a PNG file. So basically what a PNG file is, it's just the text. You see how everything back here is checkered? So when you bring that into Photoshop, it's not gonna register a background. Uh, it's just gonna register the text of the game. Personally, for the Life is Strange videos, I really liked the font style and the color scheme of Life is Strange too. so I've just been using that in my videos. But I've already got that saved, so I just literally dragged and dropped this onto my computer. You guys can see how the background is clear. That's perfect. Sometimes you will have to manually do that yourself, but I'm not gonna go into that. Uh, there are plenty of other videos that explain it a lot better than me. So let's open up Photoshop. So we're just gonna create new, and I've already got saved, but thumbnails for YouTube are shot in a 1280 by 720 pixel format. So make sure you guys save that preset you guys can do that right here. So the width, 1280, height, uh, 720, orientation, horizontal, of course, resolution, 300. Make sure you guys are doing pixels, not inches. Pixels. Uh, transparent background, yes. I just like to work with a transparent background. I don't know why. And then you hit create. And you drop whatever screenshot image. I keep them all saved over here because they don't stay on my computer too long and I just delete them right after. Uh, let's use this one of Frank Bowers. Let's drag him in there. Let's extend it, make it a little bigger so that we cut out the, uh, the font. And this is what I used to make, I think it was episode six of The Life is Strange. Um, yeah, and then go to wherever you have saved the PNG file of the text of Life is Strange. So for me, it's an edit video projects 2021. So I know the year of every video that I make. Uh, Life is Strange, and it's gonna be right here, this asset right here. I'm gonna drag that into Premiere, I mean into uh, Photoshop. And see, it's all over him, and you got the two right here. You're just gonna go to the eraser tool, and I'll click it, it's gonna give you that little warning that never really means anything. Wait, that's not the eraser tool. Eraser tool, 
gonna give you that little warning. And literally, I just erase the number two, and then I leave it alone. To get this text to be behind Frank instead of painstakingly like doing it by hand, all I have to do is just select the image of Frank, go up to here where it says select, Photoshop is gonna automatically hit subject, and it's going to automatically give me the uh, marching ants around Frank, letting me know that he's selected. And then all I'm gonna do, there's an easier way to do it, like you can auto delete, but I like to do it by hand because it's just more fun. Uh, you select the, uh, the font text, you go back over to the eraser tool, and then no matter what you do, it's going to erase at all the image that is behind Frank. And I'm just gonna do this by hand. And you see how he is just, how it just looks like the uh, the title is behind Frank instead of in front of his face. And I like that look for YouTube thumbnails, especially gaming videos. And boom, your thumbnail is done. You're gonna go up to uh, subject, you're gonna hit deselect, and that's it. And then you're gonna hit control shift S that's basically save as, save to your computer, or you can save as cloud document. You're gonna go right here, select JPEG, and you're gonna name it whatever you like. See, these are all my thumbnails. I'm very basic with the thumbnails. I've just been naming them like Strange 4, Strange 3. Basically, whatever the uh, episode number is, is what they get. So this thumbnail was Strange 8, and I named it accordingly, Strange 8. All right, your YouTube video and your thumbnail are now done. What do you do? You go over to youtube.com and then you upload it. You hashtag it, you name it, you title it. You do all the things that you do as a YouTuber. You go up to the top of here, you hit upload, uh, upload video. You, you click the thing, you go over to wherever you have the video saved. So finish videos. Let's just click a random video. I'm not actually going to upload this. But yeah, I mean, that's that's it. That's all that goes into this. You, you name it whatever you want up here. You give a little description. I haven't been doing that lately because I'm a bad YouTuber. You hit upload a uh, thumbnail. You go to wherever you have your thumbnails. For me, it's in a folder called thumbnails. You select the name and boom, there's your thumbnail. You go over here, you add it to the playlist. I'm gonna hit Life is Strange. That's the playlist that it goes to. You go down here, you give it all the hashtags and things. You go over, you name the gameplay footage or whatever uh, you're doing. And that's it, that's how I make my videos. This is what I've been doing like twice a day, every single day. Oh no, I don't want that to, up to actually upload, so uh, cancel, cancel upload. And yeah, it's super, super easy. So now let's go into what I pride myself on. What I pride myself on is my organization. If you go over into my files, everything has its place in here. So I have three hard drives. This is my boot drive. This is my Samsung SSD. This basically has all of like my program files, my Steam games, and just things that I that don't really need to leave my computer. Uh, I don't really, I don't, put anything like personal, no photos, nothing in here, no videos get recorded to here ever. Uh, edit, this is my SSD drive, this is Samsung SSD. Um, uh, basically, like unfinished videos, I call that video projects. I have, a, I have a subfolder called 2021. I had another subfolder called 2020, but all of those videos are done. And yeah. I have Among Us, my camera bag, Dead of Night, which I haven't started recording yet. Uh, all of the Life is Strange videos, see like episode three through uh, 10 are here, but I honestly, like some of these videos ended up being two hours long, so I just cut the game in half, which is why I don't have any of them starting with intros anymore. Um, so yeah, I just go in like episode four, you have the camera footage, the gameplay footage, and the microphone audio. Uh, episode three, the exact same way. Game, camera, audio. And that's it. And then I have over here what I use to make the thumbnail. So I have just the various PNG files of that. I have the Life is Strange soundtrack in case I need to add that into a video. Uh, haven't needed to since like episode two, but Little Nightmares one. 
Uh, I made three episodes of that. Again, game, camera, audio. Just stay organized with everything. All of this, all of this in the edit folder, it's just literally, it's presets, it's sound effects, video effects, and unfinished videos. That's it. That's all that I keep in here. I don't keep photos. I don't keep think, keep finished projects in here. That's what I have this hard drive for, which I named The Vault. That's where I keep finished artwork, B-roll, clips, uh, documents, finished photos, finished videos, logos, personal stuff. Uh, Photoshop cuts, which honestly, uh, that needs to go in the edit folder because those are Photoshop cuts. So like the PNG files, thumbnails, like nothing that it, that needs to be worked on goes in here. Hang on, let's delete that. Nothing that needs to be worked on goes in here. Everything that is finished goes in here. So when I'm done making the video on uh, Premiere Pro, I'm going to offload it and it's going to go right into this folder ready to upload for YouTube. So if I click on it, it's gonna open up and you'll see that this is the entire complete finished video of what Life is Strange. You are so frustrating to talk to. Fun. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something out of it. Uh, if you did, comment down below. Let me know what I taught you. Let me know if this was totally illegible garbage and that I should never make one of these again. Um, but you know, again, hopefully you learned something out of it. Hopefully I taught you guys something. Hopefully uh, I helped you in some small way. If I did, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe maybe, share this video with your streamer, gamer friend who wants to get into YouTube. And remember, just make that first video. It, it is, it, I it get, it's so daunting to uh, put yourself out there on YouTube, but it, once you get started, it's it's not that intimidating. And it's a great confidence booster. Like talking in front of a camera to you guys is just like so good. It's like having my own personal therapy that doesn't talk back to me, <laughs> honestly. And yeah. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you guys if you liked it, like it, ring the bell to be notified whenever I upload new videos, subscribe, share the video with your friends. And I'll see you next one. Bye. I don't know where to look at the camera still.